The world said to Sennheiser, we want a closed back HD 600, and this is what they gave us. This is the Sennheiser HD 620S. Now, looking at it, I'm sure the first thing you'll notice is what I noticed as well. This doesn't look like an HD 600 chassis. It looks more like the 5 Series, like the 560S, the 598s, and so on. But in the hand, it isn't quite the same. This, uh, this is metal. The adjustment mechanism is a much higher quality, and these pads are nice. They are deep, they are wide and tall. This thing has a ton of padding on top in just the right areas. It's a bit clampy out of the box. It loosens up nicely over time. This is a pretty solid evolution over the design that was used for the 560S, but has been improved in a lot of ways for its build feel for the HD 620S. And honestly, for me, it's really, really comfortable. Quick pause. Before we get too far into this, if you want to see more videos about headphones, especially technical analysis like we're gonna do later in this video, make sure you are subscribed down below. You don't wanna miss the stuff we have coming soon. All right, back to the video. Now that isn't to say it's perfect because it is not. This does have some faults. Particularly, it does get pretty warm after a while. That's common for closed backs, but I've noticed after about three, four hours, I'm starting to get some heat buildup. Now, I'm also listening in an area where it can be 90 degrees. The sun is a deadly laser. So things are going to get warm regardless. But of course, I'm getting more heat buildup in this than I am in an open back, for example. The same issue I get with things like the K361, K371, but this is a lot more comfortable and I don't worry about it breaking on me. Speaking of, this is a lot more comfortable and a lot more isolating than most closed backs that I've really tried ever. I mean, the DCA E3 wins on comfort, but the DCA E3 is also $2,000. But for me, right off the bat, this is a much more comfortable and more isolating headphone than things like the DT770, the DT1770. Definitely in every conceivable facet better than the closed back version of Sundara, and better than things like the Rode NTH100. Now this has a single entry 25 millimeter four pole connection. Sennheiser has told me that they have balanced options for these as well. Just standard, stick it in here, twist lock, and we are good to go. Now, I'm not using it with a balance connector. I'm using it with a three and a half millimeter. I also have a 6.3 millimeter adapter for this, and this isn't a super long cable. There we go, that's as long as the cable is. I mean, it's not a short cable, but it's also not one of those ones that comes with a headphone. It's like, you know, 10, 15 feet. That's just too much. And one more note before we get into sound, this thing is really easy to drive. I could get it way above my listening levels using just the Apple dongle that goes to USB-C. I could plug it up to my laptop's three and a half millimeter and be totally happy with that. But of course, you can plug this up to an amp too. It is pretty fun on tubes, I will say. Let's get into the sound on that subject. This thing sounds interesting. It's not like the HD 600, but in some ways it also is. As you'll see later in measurements, there are definitely similarities. And in a lot of ways, this headphone also sounds pretty close to things like the Harman Target but with a few changes. There's a couple areas where this has peaks and it's trouble. There's also a couple areas where it has dips in the mid range. And there's also a bump in the low mids and upper bass. At times, this can make the headphone sound boxy, but it really seems to depend on the track. There are tracks on this that sounded sibilant. There are tracks on this that sounded a bit uh, boxy or wooly. And then about 70% of the time, tracks sound great. And that's honestly a pretty good thing. That's better than the vast majority of closed backs on the market. In fact, I would still put this in, I'd say, my top, probably top four or five closed backs, uh, most of those being more expensive ones like the E3, the Radiance, or the Aeon Noir. So the company this headphone fits into, well, it's good company. They're good closed backs, but it's still not perfect. Vocals are intimate, not as intimate and as present as the HD 600, but I can see it leaning in that direction. They also don't sound quite as closed in as things like the 598C did, or say, on the DT770. It does a pretty good job of managing that space. 
In fact, sonically, aside from the consistency between some tracks not sounding as good, again, that roughly 30% of the time tracks bounce between being a little bit woolly or a little bit too bright, its only real weakness is timbre. So the timbre on this is just not as good as an HD600. It is what it is. HD600 656XX are just incredible at timbre. If you don't know what timbre it is, it's just how natural something sounds, how natural something feels, and this isn't bad in terms of timbre. Not by any means. We're comparing it to some of the best timbre in headphones at almost any price. The 6XO series just nails timbre. And that means this headphone has a lot to try and live up to since it's in that series. I would say the timbre on this is comparable to the original 660S. In fact, in a lot of ways, I feel like this headphone is very comparable to the original HD 660S. And I say that in both the good ways and the bad ways. It does sound relatively stagey for a closed back. I think a lot of that has to do with the signal to noise ratio because it is very isolating. And having that nice black background with no noise well, it gives you space to hear more in your music. Because of that, I've always been a person that likes closed backs. I've just always been mad that there's not many good closed backs on the market unless you spend a ton of money. There are things like the K361, but they're not built as well. There's things like the CD900 ST or the 7506, but while great, in many ways, they don't quite hold up to headphones like this. The more modern ergonomics here really go a long way. Bass extension is going to vary from person to person. Closed backs vary so much from head to head. With me, I didn't get crazy bass extension, definitely more so than I get on the HD600 or 650, but nowhere near as much bass extension as I would get on something like the K371 or K361. That mid bass bump does make it feel a little bit punchy, but still not super dynamic. More dynamic than things like the DCA Aeon Closed X, but not as dynamic as something like a Focus radiance. When the treble balance is right on tracks, which is again about 70% of them, it can sound really good. Especially things like brass have a certain brilliance to them in the upper treble that just shines. I would describe it less as sifted, more as shimmery. With some orchestral tracks, the lower mid-range and or upper bass, again, could get a little bit boxy, um, especially with things like cello on the lower end. Really, if you get like a solo string that's a, a bass string of some kind that's being played, you get a little bit more of that boxy sound. But the upper mid-range of things that are orchestral sounds really, really good. Again, especially brass. I think that people who are into classic rock will probably like this one a little bit less. I could be wrong. Um, for me personally, for stuff like that, I tend to prefer something a little bit warmer, but it's really gonna depend. Uh, stuff like Fleetwood Mac sounds fantastic on here. Stuff sort of like indie rock, things like Half Moon Run sounds really good on here. I guess it depends on what album you're talking about. Some of them are indie rock, some are more like indie folk. I did really like folk music though. I prefer that more on the open backs like the HD6XX. Anything electronic just sounds incredible on these through the roof, absolutely perfect. If you're a jazz person, it's going to go back and forth depending on the songs. So Seal, McLaurin, Slavon's Dreams and Daggers, which is a live recorded album, sounds really, really great on these. Especially the second record's ending track, which is You're Getting to Be a Habit With Me, you can really feel the space, feel the audience, hear everyone around you. It sounds really good. And that leads me to another part, which is spatial audio, which is something that was mentioned on the advertisements of this headphone. Now, this obviously is a passive analog headphone. It doesn't have spatial audio built in, but it does work well with spatial audio mixing suites or spatial audio with things like uh, Atmos and Apple Music. And I think that could be due to its a bit more Harman-like tuning. Not spot on Harman, but Harman-like. It just works really well for things that are spatial focused or binaurally recorded. Usually those things are better with an open back, but this being a closed back that responds really well to binaural recordings is really nice to see. So there's a fair bit of ups and downs. I know some people will see this as a negative review and some will see it as positive, but for me, it's a headphone that I'm thankful exists. It's one that I'm going to be using a fair bit because I already do use it a fair bit. It is a headphone that I would describe as good in the closed back range, if not great in the closed back range, but not excellent. I do think that excellence is something that Sennheiser can achieve in this line, and I think this shows that they're really trying for that. Another nice thing is that you guys, being the viewers, the customers, and myself, they're listening to what we have to say. So if you have an opinion on these, if you get a set, if you try them, leave Sennheiser some feedback because it's actually really nice to know those guys are listening. Now let's get into measurements with a plot twist. Resolve is doing them this time. I measured two sets of these and he measured a third. So we have three sets. I don't know, let's see what he has to say. Resolve? 
That's right, it's time to talk about everyone's favorite subject. Headphone measurements. Such joy we get to experience. And let me just say right off the bat that I completely agree with DMS that this headphone sounds occasionally very good and occasionally very weird. And I think you'll kind of see why when looking at the data. Now with the HD620S, we've tested several different units and we've also tested on three different measurement rigs, which should be thought of as different heads. Why is that important? So measuring with each of these rigs is kind of like getting a snapshot from a different perspective. And as it happens, Mr. BNK5028 seemingly does not enjoy the HD620 as much as Mr. Gross does. And yes, I am referring to them as if they are people because who needs friends when you have these guys? These guys are my friends. I need help. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the measurements and you'll notice a few key features here. Uh, so there's a strong mid bass bump and kind of a weird forward character to that section there of the mid range. Uh, there's sort of like this kind of boxy character that comes through from the mids as a result of this feature. And the focus on the mid bass means that the sub bass is kind of drowned out by comparison. Uh, and then for the treble, you can see there are some fine grain features which generally aren't audible, but at the same time, there are some features with the 5 and 2 8 that could show up as a peak. With the Gross rig, however, things look much better. And here it is relative to Harman, you can see that for the wideband tuning, it's mostly solid. Uh, you still get some of the fine grain stuff, but that's not stuff that I would say is perceptually relevant. And on the 4128, there are again some additional treble features there that stand out. Now, we probably shouldn't be over-focused on trying to read the tea leaves here. It's more that the headphones themselves are behaving differently with different factors to consider. So for example, the pads are compressing differently as a result of different clamp pressure from the size of the head. But also the fact that the rigs are different, there's there's different contours to the side of the head, meaning you know the way that the pads compress are gonna be different. Uh, the ear is gonna take up a different amount of space inside the cup and this is gonna change the air volume. So it's all of these kinds of things that are gonna to lead to a different response when it's actually being worn in practice on different heads. Now, I also wanted to note something else about the sub bass. Sennheiser has supplied their own measurements uh, taken on the Gross 45 CA, which is great, um, but they do show that there is a stronger sub bass presence than what we've found here with these measurements. And the B&K systems that we use are actual mannequin heads with contours to the side of the face, whereas the Gross 43 and Gross 45 CA have a flat plate uh, for the side of the head, which typically gives you a more flush coupling. And that means that oftentimes you get a better seal and you get more sub bass. But we noticed the sub bass droop on the Gross as well with the same flat plate. And additionally, in practice, when worn on an actual human with in-ear microphones, at least with these three units that we've been testing, the sub bass isn't as fully integrated as maybe Sennheiser would like. Um, it's a minor thing because it's not like it's massively different there, but I felt this was something important to note. Maybe you'll have a different experience for this range. Now let's talk about harmonic distortion and EQ. So the distortion performance for the HD620S is average at best. Uh, it's not something you'll ever hear or have to deal with when listening to music normally, uh, even loud, but since distortion is related to level, it puts a limit on what you can do with EQ. Thankfully, when EQing this headphone, you probably wouldn't need to make massive adjustments anyways, or at least I don't recommend it because I, that's not something I'd say it really needs. Mainly, I think it's worth reducing the mid bass a bit, adjust the sub bass to your taste, and then fix that odd mid range feature. And given how this headphone's treble seems to change from head to head, I left that alone. There's nothing major that stood out to me perceptually here, so uh, that's this is all I ended up doing. So the bottom line for objective performance is that it's a bit of a mixed bag. For its wideband tuning, things are fairly reasonable, with a slight emphasis to the bass and to the treble in particular spots. But its overall goodness and badness will likely depend on the head that's wearing it, and how the headphone changes depending on that head. I know that's unsatisfying, but this is the reality of many headphone designs. And that's not necessarily a knock against the HD620S, since this is a closed back headphone, and with these types of designs, that is sometimes a requirement, but it's still an important thing to consider. And speaking personally, without EQ, it is occasionally a bit odd sounding to me, but after making those you know, small, subtle EQ adjustments, this headphone does sound very, very good. So that's where I'm gonna leave it for objective performance, and I think you guys can make up your mind as to whether or not this is something that's gonna be suitable for you. I can only imagine how thoroughly entertained you are by that previous segment. Just living on the edge of your seat, riveting stuff, isn't it? Yet yeah, Resolve is in Germany for high-end Munich right now. That's why I can talk so much. Have fun, buddy. Let's get into the conclusions. This is a pretty easy to drive headphone, but you can benefit 
benefit from using a tube amp with it if you want. That can warm things up, it can bring the treble down a little bit. I loved using it with the Dark Voice, but some of the guys loved using it with the Felix amps. For me, Dark Voice sits on my desk and that stays connected to this, but I don't mind using it on the go with my phone on the Apple dongle or my laptop. It's a lot better than most of the closed back headphones available at its price point, but it's still not excellent. I think Sennheiser is moving in a really good direction here, but I also think that it needs a little bit more work before it 100% lives up to the legacy of the HD6XO line of headphones. I'd say it's better than the 660 SV1, but not quite as good as the other current open back lineup. And as a closed back, I still think they made something that is pretty compelling. But I think it's also important that if you want to see more good closed backs, if you want to see something like this become truly excellent to the best it can possibly be, let me know, let Sennheiser know too, because I have no doubt they can pull it off. And I, for one, am excited to see what the next closed back they make is. On a final note of that too, this is probably the best closed back they've made so far. I would say this is a notably better closed back headphone than things like the HD820. So good job. I think a lot of people are going to like this. And thank you Resolve for that riveting section on measurements. I don't know how I'm gonna get any sleep tonight. It just elevated my heart rate so much. I feel like I just ran four miles of cardio because it was so thrilling. I'm, I'm giving him crap. He does a great job. So I think that's going to wrap up this video. If you liked it, leave a like down below, a comment, letting me know what you want to see in the future. If you want to get active in the community, you can at the forum or the discord, both available at the link in video description. As always, don't forget to stick around, subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Till next one, guys. Peace.